Well, good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to another week of online Kids Church, CBC Kids Online Kids Church. And I'm so glad that you are here this morning. And this morning, we are going to be starting what we call a new unit. And we are going to be looking at uh, a new time of how the Israelites and how they have now come into the promised land and then we are going to now look at go into the book we were in the book of joshua now we're going to go into the book of judges and a time when the judges were in the land and we'll learn about that today so we want to welcome you i'm so glad that you're here i'm going to pray and then we're going to begin our time and start worship with worship and worshiping the lord let's pray this morning god thank you for this morning and thank you for the boys and girls and lord whenever they're watching maybe it's not morning for them i say morning as that's when we have kids church but I'm so glad they're watching and that they are able to uh, learn and continue to learn about you in this way. And we pray, God, for the boys and girls. I pray for them and their families and uh, all those that would be watching this, Lord, that they would learn, learn about the judges in the Bible today. And they're different than judges we have in courtrooms uh, that we have today here in America. But they are something that uh, we hear about of how they were to judge the people. And God, you're a judge. You judge us about uh, looking at us. And if we have put our trust in you, you see us as uh, Jesus's righteousness upon us and that we stand right before you. And so, God, we thank you for your love. We thank you, God, for sending your son, Jesus, as we learn today and continue to learn about you. We thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Well, we're so glad you're here. As I said, or not here with me, I'm here. You're there at home and watching. Let's worship the Lord now. can a young man keep his way pure by guarding it according to your word how can a young man keep his way pure by guarding it according to your word with my whole heart i seek you let me not wander from your commandments with my
All right, boys and girls, I'm here again with Mikey the Monkey. And Mikey the Monkey is here, and Mikey the Monkey is going to uh, tell us about what is the word for the day. So can Mikey, can first, can you say hi to the boys and girls? Tell them hi there. Hello. Yeah, well, this is Mikey, and Mikey uh, is going to tell you, boys and girls, what is the word for the day? So, Mikey, we've rehearsed, we've practiced. Hopefully, you have this right this time, and you will say the right word. So, can you say, uh, tell us, tell the boys and girls at home, what is the word for the day? Can you tell them what the word for the day is? What is the word for the day? Go ahead and tell them, okay? Okay. Um, no, Mikey, don't say okay. Just tell them what is the word for the day. Candy. Oh, candy. Okay, well, the yeah, candy, that is not the word for today. Mikey, are you behaving? Uh-huh. Well, I don't know. So, Mikey, candy is not the word for the day. Can we try again? Can you try again? Can you tell the boys and girls, what is the word for today? Can you tell them what's the word for today? Come on, behave. Tell them what's the word for today. Go ahead and tell them, okay? Okay. Um... Mikey, that is not how, Mikey, are you behaving? You need to behave. Um, that's not the word for the day, or that's not what I want you to say. I don't want you to say, okay, I want you to tell the boys and girls, what is the word for today? Tell them the word for the day. What's the word for the day? Donut! Mikey, that is not the word for today. The word for today is not that. Mikey, you got to behave. Let's behave, all right? Can you behave? Mm-hmm. All right, well, then let's behave. Let's behave, and, and you need to say the right word, okay? Tell the boys and girls, what is the word for the day? Can you tell them? Go ahead and tell them, okay? Okay. Mikey, stop. What is the word for the day? Tell them. What's the word for the day? Can you tell the boys and girls, what is the word for the day? Dum-dum. Dum-dum? dum uh-huh. Dum dum. Oh, I got it. I got him this time. Here you go. I have a lollipop for you. A dum dum lollipop. No. No, that's not what you want. Uh-uh. Well, you said dum dum. I was talking about you. Mikey, that's not very nice. You dum dum. <laughs> Mikey, that is not very nice. I don't know what you are talking about, Mikey. That's not very... What are you doing over there? Are you making fun of me? You talking while I'm trying to make noises or talk while I talk? You need to behave. Let's behave. What's the word for the day? Dum dum! Mikey, that's not the word for the day. And it's not nice if you call people that. There are dum dum lollipops, but you shouldn't say that about me or anyone. Can you be nice? Uh-huh. Well, Mikey, I think uh, when we hear the word for the day, you might need to think about that, okay, when you are saying things about dum-dum. Can you remember what the word for the day is? i tell you what, I'll whisper in Mikey's ear. Everybody at home, boys and girls, be real, real quiet, and we'll see if he can get the word for the day. Mikey, can you get the word for the day? I'm going to whisper it to you, okay? Shh, let's see. Mikey, behave. You're being really bad. All right, Mikey, do you know the word for the day now? Uh-huh. All right, well, what is it? Can you tell the boys and girls? Go ahead and tell them, okay? Okay. Mikey, stop it. Behave. I'm watching you this time. Behave. What is the word for today? Tell the boys and girls. What's the word for the day? Repentance. Repentance. That is right. He finally got it right, boys and girls. The word for the day is repentance. And so, uh, Mikey, I'm glad you got the word for the day, repentance. And so what I want you to do is think about that because, you know, repentance, as we're learning with our big picture question and things, is repentance is turning away from our sin, from doing things wrong, and turning to Jesus. I think, you know, when we say, Dumb, dumb, and say that to someone, that's not nice at all. That would be an example of something we would want to repent, turn away from saying that, and not say that anymore. Don't you think so? Uh-huh. All right, so you will start doing the right thing and not saying that? Uh-huh. All right, well, can you say bye to the boys and girls, though? Can you go ahead and tell them bye? Okay.
Well, no, don't say okay. Go ahead and tell them bye. Can you tell them bye? See ya, boys and girls. Okay. All right, Mikey. I'm glad Mikey was here. Remember the word for the day that Mikey told us, repentance, not all those other things. Learn to repent. Repentance is a great thing to know. And turn away from our sin, but turning to Jesus. All right, see you, Mikey. And boys and girls, see you later. And let's uh, continue in our time of kids' church and worship. Romans 5, 8. Romans 6, 23. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Hey man, hey man. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen, amen. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen, amen. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. He on the cross on Saved, he who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, will be saved. So boys and girls, I hope you had a great time worshiping the Lord and worshiping God. And today, as I said, we are going to begin in the book of Judges. And Judges comes right after Joshua. Remember last week we learned at the end of Joshua and how Joshua said, who would they serve? Would they serve the Lord? And yes, they said they would serve the Lord. But then we see in the Bible, in the book of Judges, how uh, not only in the book of Judges, but throughout the Old Testament, how the Israelites had something called a sin cycle, and the cycle is like if you think of a bicycle and wheel rolls around, spins around, and so like in life we have cycles, and so the cycle that for the Israelites and for many of us is that we sin, and so we do something, we disobey God's rules, God's laws, and then we get in trouble, and then we then have this situation where we realize we're in this bad situation. So we cry out to God, the cycle spinning around, and then God rescues us and helps us. But then we come back to normal living, and then we sin again, get in trouble, cry out to God, God rescues. So it's a cycle. And that was happening. And with, we can't really look at that without looking at uh, and knowing something. That is really what's going to be our big picture question for this unit as we look at the judges and move forward through the Old Testament. And the big picture question is, what is repentance? And many of you may know this, and there's uh, different ways that we can kind of say this, but the easiest way and for us to learn, and what we have here with what we're learning from Gospel Project for Kids, is that it says this. It says, repentance is turning away from sin and turning to Jesus. I hope you can say that at home. And what is repentance? It's turning away from sin and turning to Jesus. And so uh, if you're thinking you're going like down a road and you were to turn a different direction, you were like lost, 
And that's where we are when we're without Jesus. When, when, even when we come to know Christ and we're sinning, we're kind of not living in his direction, in his way. So we repent. And so if we were driving down a road, you're not driving. I hope you boys and girls aren't driving, but your parents were. Or if you're uh, with them and you would, you probably, maybe you've experienced this or, you know, they use this thing called a GPS now on our phones and cars and things. A lot of times it'll say, if you go the wrong direction, it'll say rerouting, rerouting, meaning taking you a different way to get to your, the place you want to go, the destination. And so if we're going somewhere and we need to, we find out we're going south and we need to go north, we're going to turn totally around. And so we're going to turn around from the south and go towards the north. And so that's what we do in repentance. We turn away from the sin and then we turn toward God and to live for God. And so what is repentance? Turning away from sin and turning to Jesus. So we're looking at our memory verse, our special key verse for this unit. I just want to tell you, when God's people cried out to him and repented of their sin, he sent a judge to rescue them. You know, Jesus is the rescuer for us. That He's the rescuer whom God sent for sinners. And if we tell our sins to God and ask him for help, he will forgive us and he will make a way for us. And the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, which is our verse for today, 1 John 1, 9 in the book of the Bible. And remember, there's a gospel of John, but there's three letters that John also wrote, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. And so we're looking in the book of 1 John, 1 John 1, 9. And I'm going to read it to you as I do so you know it is coming from the Bible, from God's word, and it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
You, um, I see you have a lot of books on space and things, but I don't think you're going to need all of this. Well, I was just trying to be as prepared as possible for this class. I want to be ready. Well, I can see you're prepared for class, but I really don't think you're going to need these books about space. Oh, can you blame me? I want to be ready to go to space. Oh, can't you just imagine it? Henrietta, the first pink puppet into outer space. Oh, it'll be so great. Uh, what are you talking about? Oh, uh, isn't this Astronauty 101? Uh, no, this is Astronomy 101. Also, I'm pretty Ooh. sure hmm. Astronauty is not the word. Ooh. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. So, if we aren't learning to go to space, uh, what will we be learning? Uh, astronomy is the study of planets and moons and stars and the cycle of their movements and orbits. Well, okay. Well, at least that's about space. That's good. Uh, it might still help, and maybe uh, I'll become an astronaut. After all! And you gotta know where the moon will be before you can travel there. Uh, you, that, that much is true. Tracking the cycles of stars is important to astronauts. And this class will be great. You know, what's even better though, is the s stories I've been studying in my Bible. Uh, would you like to hear one? Do I? Uh, is Mars red? Well, well, yes it is, but you know, I think we should leave the bubble storytelling to Pastor Mark. So, I'll let him take care of that. What do you think about that? Well, that sounds good, and I hope I can study, and i got to really get going to study. Oh, i got to learn about all the stars and the planets and all that stuff, and then also study God's Word, because he created all these things. Oh, but can you just imagine, Henrietta? The first pink puppet into outer space. Oh, it's going to be so great. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, it's going to be great. Oh, I got to go study. I got to go study. Oh, oh. Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise Him in the heights above, praise Him all His angels, praise Him all His heavenly hosts, praise Him sun and moon, praise Him all you shining stars, praise Him you highest heavens and you waters above the
praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise Him in the heights above, praise Him all His angels, praise Him all His heavenly hosts, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise Him in the heights above, praise Him all His angels, praise Him all His heavenly hosts, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise Him in the heights above, praise Him all His angels, praise Him all His heavenly hosts. So you saw uh, Dr. Neptune, uh, Professor Neptune, and Henrietta, and talking about uh, going in space and, and all that. Um, but you know, uh, we sometimes can look at these things and look at to what space is and, and uh, kind of figuring uh, things out about those things. But when we look at that, one of the things is to remember, and we're gonna sh I'm going to show you this Bible, what's called a Bible timeline, and remembering how we got here through the judges, uh, up to the judges. And so we've studied about how God created the heavens and earth, and that's what they were talking about with that astronomy, not astronasi. And God created the heavens, the earth, all the animals and the planets, and we see they created it in all at the beginning. But time went on, and God called a man named Abraham and promised to build a nation through his family. God kept his promise, and the nation of Israel grew. They eventually became enslaved in the land of Egypt and needed a deliverer. So God sent Moses to deliver his people from Egypt and teach them God's law. After Moses, Joshua led the people into the promised land. But when Joshua died, the people stopped obeying God. And that's where we put, pick up today in the book of Judges to look at what happens. And so we're going to look at this and kind of see a Bible story that tells us about this and what happens with in the first three chapters of the book of Judges. So watch this. Hey everybody, I'm Megan. And I'm Jessie. Jessie, would you want to go with me to the park after today's Bible story? Oh man, I'm not allowed to go to the park today. Yesterday, my, my mom told me to stay with my little brother at the swings, but I went over to the monkey bars on the other side of the park. My mom was upset because she couldn't find me and she found my brother left all alone. I got in trouble for disobeying. Oh, I'm sorry, Jesse. It's okay. I should have obeyed. You're right. Nothing good ever happens when we disobey. In today's Bible story, God's people disobeyed him. God's people seem to disobey him a lot. <laughs> You're right, Jesse. God's people did disobey him a lot. God wanted the people to love and obey him, so he gave them a leader called a judge. Let me tell you about it. Joshua had died. Without a strong leader, the Israelites disobeyed God. Nothing good ever happened when the Israelites disobeyed God. God wanted the people to love and obey Him, so He gave them a leader called a judge. Othniel was the first judge. God was with Othniel, and Othniel led the Israelites into battle. God helped the Israelites win. The land was peaceful for many years. Then Othniel died. With no leader, the Israelites forgot about God again. They worshipped false gods instead. God was unhappy. He let the king of Moab attack the Israelites and defeat them so they would turn back to him. 
The Israelites had to serve the king of Moab for 18 years. The Israelites remembered how good it had been when they loved and obeyed God. They cried out to him, save us! So God chose Ehud to save them. The Israelites sent Ehud to the king of Moab with a gift of money. Ehud made himself a sword. He hid it under his clothes. Then Ehud went to the king of Moab. Ehud said, I have a secret message for you. The king told all his attendants to go away so he was alone with Ehud. When the king stood up, Ehud reached under his clothes and pulled out his sword. Ehud killed the king. Then he ran away, locking the doors of the room behind him. When Ehud got away, he blew a ram's horn and became the leader of the Israelites. They fought the Moabites and won. They had peace in the land for 80 years. Ehud died and the Israelites forgot God again. When they remembered how good they had had it, when they loved and obeyed God, they cried out to him, save us. God sent a third judge, Shamgar, to save them. After God's people sinned, the judges helped God's people obey God again. But the judges could not change the people's hearts and make them love God. God had a plan. He sent his son Jesus to change his people's hearts and save them from sin forever. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is a great verse, and this is, just leads us to our closing here this morning and to our Christ connection. And our Christ connection is this. You know, the judges were great, but they still weren't able to save Israel from their single most important need. Their biggest enemy was something they couldn't conquer. The, the cause of all their troubles was their sin. To defeat the, this enemy, they needed a change of heart. Sure enough, God was up to something. Where our human efforts fall short, he's always got a good plan. And his plan involves sending the true deliverer, Jesus Christ, his very own son. Only Jesus is able to change our hearts and to make us right with God when we put our trust in him, when we believe in him and what he did on the cross. You see, Jesus saves people from their sins forever. Boys and girls, aren't you glad, aren't you thankful that God sent his son Jesus into the world? And I'm thankful that Jesus went to the cross and died for my sins. I hope you have learned today about these judges and how they ruled and how they tried to get the people on the right path, but then the, a lot of judges, as we're going to find, they would live for God for a while, but even they fell into that sin cycle and would sin. And I'm so thankful that God has sent us his son and that we know Jesus. This was before Jesus came to the earth, but God had a plan, as we said, and he sent the rescuer. So boys and girls, I hope you will remember this. I hope you remember this verse, 1 John 1, 9, and that remembering, confess your sins to Jesus. Confess them and he is faithful. He is just, meaning he's like a justice, meaning that's where we get judged from, to forgive us and to make us right with him through Jesus Christ. Let's pray as we close this morning. God, thank you for these boys and girls. And again, I pray for them as they do each week that if they have not put their trust in Jesus, that they would just, as we saw, have seen today, what is repentance? To turn away from sin and to turn to Jesus. And so they're say, they would say, I know I'm a sinner and I need to turn away from that, turn to Jesus. I put my trust in Jesus, who Jesus as the one that is the Son of God that lived without sin and died on the cross and was buried and raised again. And he's alive today. And they put their trust in him, confess that, confess to Jesus. And they can even, it says in Romans, that they confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. They tell others. And they can tell their parents at home. And when we 
are together again, they, I'd love to hear from them about that. Or they can tell their parents and they could email me. And so, God, I thank you that uh, for these boys and girls and pray that they would make that decision if they never have. And for those that are living for you, God, I pray that you would help them that they would not live in that sin cycle, but they would uh, live with the Holy Spirit guiding them and directing them and remembering about repentance when they do sin to turn back to you, turn away from that sin to turn to you and confess it and ask you to forgive them and you do. And so we thank you, God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for these boys and girls and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Well. I thank you uh, for being here today, and or again, I keep saying being here. You're not here. You're at home, but I'm glad that you're watching and that uh, you have learned about the judges. The big picture question, what is repentance? It is turning from your sin and to Jesus and our verse, 1 John 1, 9. So we thank you, and uh, until next time, keep living for Jesus and looking to him each and every day. Thanks. See you later. Bye.